Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is not your regular third person action adventure title. If I told you that this was about the titular Senua who is a strong female warrior adventuring through Norse mythology, I would be willing to bet that, absent prior knowledge of the game, you are imagining a version of Kratos with somewhat more decolletage and, if possible, slightly less clothing. If I added that Senua suffers from psychosis, then, well, we've just gone full on mythological murder simulator and this is yet another game we can add to the pile of humdrum action titles treating mental illness as an excuse for violence and female protagonists as an excuse to titillate the 14 year old kids who get off on any and all displays of flesh. As you might have guessed from that rather leading paragraph, this is not such a game and represents an attempt by Ninja Theory to represent psychosis and mental illness in general in a more nuanced and sympathetic way than the topic is used to. The game is set in Hell, where Senua has come to try and revive her dead boyfriend, and from there it is your job to guide Senua through puzzles and combat to get there before, as the game tells you, you succumb to the rot pervading your body spreading each time you die. Many people will have bristled somewhat at the mention of combat in a game about mental illness, and I get that, as there's very much an issue with mental health and violence being equated, but I actually quite like it. The creatures that she is fighting are seemingly summoned from the ether, and so it feels more like Senua battling with her own internal demons in order to continue on with her journey. The combat itself is your standard fare with light attack, heavy attack, block and dodge, with blocking at the right time staggering your enemy, but the camera pulls in really quite close too, and you're in a state of permanently being locked on, representing Senua being focused on one thing at a time. This means that, when you get more than one or two enemies in a combat, it can get quite frantic, with attacks coming in from everywhere, and they're not shy about attacking you time and again, although it's quite lenient with your health. In general, it feels quite weighty and satisfying to pull off well, with panic setting in if you start messing things up, but it veers towards frustrating towards the end of the game as you get thrown into combat with five or six enemies surrounding you and no real opportunity to face them all. The puzzles are a bit more varied, with your bread and butter being rune puzzles that have you examining the environment for collections of objects which form the shape of runes when looked at with the correct perspective. I never found these too taxing, especially as the game gives you some hints when you're close to the runes. The environments are expansive, and the main frustration I got from these was when I'd been walking around an area for quite some time and I hadn't seen a path to go to a different area. The other puzzles are much more specific to a zone, whether it's trying to get to a gate without being burned, or listening for oral cues as to which direction to take, and these are quite wonderful and thematic to the task at hand, and I don't really want to spoil any of them. Really, the puzzles and the combat are all in service to the story, and while that starts off slowly, it builds up quite spectacularly to an ending which genuinely moved me, and I'm definitely not going to talk about any further. Beforehand it was a difficult journey, not because the mechanics were hard or because it wasn't interesting, but because Senua's psychosis usually expresses itself as critical voices in her head, suggesting paths or criticising her for going places where she can't get back from, and this hits quite close to the bone for me, and I could see a lot of myself in Senua. If you're looking for a story-driven game which delves into topics which are usually dealt with dreadfully, if at all, then you could do a lot worse than Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Now. If you've decided that this game is for you, stop listening to this right now and like and subscribe. Those of you who are unsure, keep listening for a few seconds. Has everybody else gone? Good. So, some of you might be nervous about the permadeath thing I talked about earlier, where if the rot reaches your head, then your journey is over. I am fairly sure that this is the game lying to you to try and weird you out and stress you, but I never felt in danger of losing my save file and I know of people who have died a lot in this game, and never had any issue with losing their progress. So, if that's your sticking point, then I would still recommend you try this game out. Anyway, I hope that you all have a lovely rest of your day. Goodbye!